All right, guys, this is going to be so much fun, and you will be surprised how easy perspective from this view is. Let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie, and we're going to jump right in to this fun, fun painting. Actually, well, I guess it's interesting. They call color pencil works painting, and I'm using markers, so I don't know. It, it's Maybe it's a painting. It's a drawing. It's a design, and it is actually really close to the photograph. I was so surprised, and I was not really looking at the photograph when I did this. I need to bring this up here. <laughs> So when I was using the photograph, let's see, do I have my image on this one? Oh, I do. So look at that. This is my drawing and that's the art, the, the original photo photo. I got the photo off of Unsplash. If anybody's interested, I will get it linked up in my description or in the comments below, I forgot to grab the link. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're working on uh, four and a half by six-ish postcards. This is the 100% cotton Arteza postcards. Comes in these uh, little tins. And yeah, having a lot of fun using them too. Isn't that pretty too? That's another class that we just did. <laughs> All right. I need to go ahead and you like mine better. Mine has a little bit more light. It, it's not quite as dark, but it's really super easy. And so let's start. We are using that piece of paper on a, I need to go to my other spot. Uh, other screen there. I, I'm letting that reference be turned sideways because, well, we don't need that much of the reference, right? <laughs> oh, let's see here. Pencil. Yes, I'm just using a Statler Mars Techno. This has the, the long lead that's inside. Uses a special type of pencil sharpener that you just go in the side. This one, I'm, let's see, this is a Coom pencil sharpener. So you can sharpen your pencil in this, in these holes. You also have a long and a short pointy. So it makes it really nice to, whoa. <sighs> Apparently, I drop crumbs from it, too, from that pencil sharpener when I turn it upside down. I am using a pencil, I will use a pen, and I will use some markers on some watercolor paper. Just because I like this paper, these markers work really well on it. I mean, look at that. So I hope you all are doing well. I am going to do a... I am not using rulers because I want my trees to have an organic feel. If you wanted this to feel like buildings, you could use rulers and you could have those as like skyscrapers. You're standing in the middle and they're all leaning in towards the center. It's an optical illusion. But I am just gonna use my pencil and you can, okay, I guess I'm gonna to have to hold this up a little bit. See, I'm just using my pencil and I'm doing an X and then I will cross my line here in the middle and here in the middle. So basically I've made a spider web. Let's see here. Show that. Ah, is the sharpener on the tools list? Thank you, Darcy, for mentioning that. I need to make sure and get that sharpener on the tools list. Thank you. I, on the spur of the moment, told you about it. <laughs> so looking at these trees, really and truly what we see here 
are super long skinny triangles, right? And they have wobbly edges. Yeah, getting vertical when you look up at the skyscrapers. Yeah. <laughs> so long, skinny triangles, and they're different lengths. And that's what gives us that illusion of multiple layers in the forest. So I'm going to start off with putting in, and I also am going to kind of give myself a little bit of a blob in the middle where I don't really want my lines to go all the way in, my heavy tree lines to go all the way into that blob. I want to have a hole in the center so that there's some light. Now we're going to just start making some long skinny triangles. Now some of the points might go all the way up in. Now I'll do this set here with the pencil, but I'm probably going to shift into using just my pen so that we're not here watching me draw it twice. Look at that. I just made that one curve down, didn't I? And then I can have another one coming up. And see, you don't have to be perfect on your width. You, it, they need to wobble. They need to just be organic. Now I'll come around and I kind of like having a heavier tree down here on the corner. Okay, so see, isn't this easy? And then you can have skinnier ones and some that are basically just like little tiny lines. And right now, it looks like just a whole bunch of triangles going all over the place, doesn't it? The main thing that you want to see is when you're doing a triangle, you know that you have a base and you have a point that's away from the base, right? The base is wider than the point. So as we're going up, I'm going to go ahead and start. I am letting the pen wobble. I am letting it skip. And I'm not worrying about the branches yet. Branches go in last. So see, let the pen skip a little bit. That's going to give you some variation in your bark. It's going to give you the opportunity to put a branch in. And having them drift off as tall, pointy triangles towards that center. And that's where the perspective is. You see that center point right here? That is our vanishing point. So if we were doing, and this is one point perspective, that's all we're doing in this show. One point perspective towards the center. It is so easy. Look at that towards the center. Ooh, maybe I'll have that one go way up into the center. Now I need to make sure that some of these don't go all the way up. We need some depth in our forest. We can have trees growing at different heights, different spacing. They don't have to all go all the way up. Look at that. So right now you're going, hmm, that's, that's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and put some of the details on this little section. And I'm just going to erase my pencil lines because those get confusing. So now you can see our pencil lines going up. Where you had your little wobbles, I want to zoom in. Let's see, I wonder. Mm, zooming in. Oh, probably just doing it this way. <laughs> there we go, let's zoom in. And turn off the autofocus. There you go. 
All right, so now it looks a little bit, well, like triangles. Shards, this could be shards of glass going forward. This could be, uh, you know, trees. It can be anything. I am going to see how I'm going along the edge here, and I'm just starting to go in and then out. I want to just get some texture on here. I'm not worried about shading right now. This is texture. And these trees, these could be aspen trees. These could be birch trees. My bark is a little dark. So, because I'm using browns and light browns when I get the color going on here, I want to show you that we are going to color the trunks in first. Uh, they're not all touching. These these trunks, see this one here, and then this one here. The trunks are not all touch touching at the bottom. And if you look right here, I'm saying that we're looking partway up. We're not at the ground level. And so some of these trees are closer to each other. Some of them are farther apart. This makes it easier to see, doesn't it? And we're not putting the leaves in the background in first. Yeah, some of them are overlapping. So I do have... I do have one down here that was overlapping or being overlapped. And you see how random this is. I'm not really paying that much attention. I just want to get some dark little details. That's all it is. Little details. And because this is so high up in the trees, you don't see these details super strong, do you? So you can put some that are like, you know, kind of like a little eyeball. That could be where a branch broke off. And if you didn't get it as thick as you wanted as you were going up. See, I want that one a little thicker. I might have some branches coming off of it. Super easy, very meditative. Yes, as you're going along, this can be super meditative. You can spend as much time or as little time as you want and just put in your color. Now, I am, like I said, I'm going to get like this section done most of the way because I know a lot of you don't have time to stick around for the entire show. But you want to see how the color goes in. You want to see. See, you want to see. And I know that I can go a little quiet sometimes doing these kinds of things. Last night when I was working on this one, so I was working on this one last night, just looking at that reference on my iPad as I was just listening to soft music and, and drawing along and just made me so happy to be doing that. These are happy. Yeah, these are happy trees, guys. Yay, welcome everybody back to the live shows. Yeah, I've been doing the live shows again. I'm having fun doing them. I think as long as I have fun working on things like this, we should do them, right? And I'm more excited about not putting pressure on myself while I'm doing things like this. If it doesn't turn out perfect, you guys understand. And if it turns out amazing, I had company while I was doing it. <laughs> I hope you guys are working on creative things. And if you're doing something else and having fun doing it and just hanging out while we're in the live, 
in the live stream or afterwards. Thank you for joining us. Taking time for yourself, taking time for your, filling up your well, filling up your well of creativity, having a little company while you do it. That's, that's sort of how I'm thinking about this. Let's see. I want to make sure that's focused. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and start on just the inside of this little section, putting the bark in. And I have two colors of the, the Twee markers. These markers are water-based, blendable. I have biscotti brown and raw umber for this, for this little set right here. Do you want to make sure I take that bit up? Madonna, welcome! And Hillary and George and Mary and Darcy and Nancy and everybody else who's here, thank you. So these are water based. They have a brush on one end and they have a sharp point on the other. I'm not using the sharp point, I'm using the brush. And I'm going to put my lighter color in first, which is the biscotti brown, and basically just fill in the area. The nice thing with the brush marker is that you've got a really sharp point, so something narrow like that little guy, I can get pretty close. And if I go outside the lines, I'm not worried because we're going to be filling most of this area and it's just going to add more texture. So fill in your triangles, your tall tree trunks, Just like that. See, once you start putting the color onto them, you can really start to see where these trees are, right? It's amazing how quick that goes in. Now I will put some of the leaves in and the branches on this little set. And then I'm going to just start going in and doing all of the rest of the tree trunks. I won't finish the sky until the very end for the whole sky because I want to make sure that I've got all my colors in that I want for the leaves. So that was the biscotti brown and this is the raw umber. It's a, a darker brown. I say it's almost, almost a burnt sienna type of raw umber brown. I think they probably use the same pigments. These, I believe, are dye ink. I don't know what the light fastness is. I didn't see any information about light fastness. I would recommend them for coloring books and for cards, rubber stamping, small pieces of art that you're practicing on, putting into journals, darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, or you can put a little tiny bit of the darker way up here at the top because it does disappear into those top leaves. You went to a redwood preserve with your sister. Oh, excellent, Dawn. And you took, a, you took several pictures from this perspective. I know that when I'm out in the forest, I'm always looking up and taking pictures from this perspective. So, I should go and find some of my pictures. But my pictures tend to be of my, my native forests, which are evergreen forests. And I wanted something with more colors. So this picture was perfect for that. Now, when you go in and start putting in your, your leaves, you do want to start lightest to darkest, just like you would do with watercolor. But you, because we, don't have to worry about the trunks. If leaves cross in front of them, that's okay. It's not going to be a problem. I wasn't paying too close attention when I was putting them in, but I did like, I put large patches of yellow all the way around, 
and then I went to my next orange and then my most red orange and then I put this cloudy gray blue into the sky yeah it is amazing it is amazing how this all works together so I'm just taking this is the lemon yellow now if I were doing this with actual watercolor I would probably well, I don't know I probably would put my background in with the yellow first then put my tree trunks and then work my orange and stuff around it I'm not sure have to try that I've never this is the first time well this was the first time I'd ever done that perspective for trees so and look at that I'm not putting it in solid I'm putting it in in a patchy rough kind of way I'm saying that we're looking part way up the trees and so there's just just all these leaves that are all over the place now I'm going to take my next orange and that is the nectarine the nectarine is actually a really soft almost peachy and I'm putting it in I'm leaving some of the yellow though I'm not worried about covering it I don't want to cover all the yellow up if you're struggling with this just slow down I'm going to I still have four three more sections to do I'm just doing this section quickly for those folks that you know don't have an hour to spend with me let's get this in really fast I'm just dabbing it on I'm letting the brush tip sort of say where I'm going and I am putting some of it off the yellow I'm not putting it all on the yellow space <laughs> so you live in Las Vegas yeah yeah definitely you know looking up all those buildings those casinos I haven't been in Las Vegas to actually be in the town of it or city of Las Vegas since I was nine when my grandparents lived there then they moved back here before they before they passed so this is mar marmalade orange it's, it's a richer color I'm not going to put it in as many spaces it's a little bit more pigmented I am going to make sure that I'm dropping it in to some areas here though don't worry we are going to put the branches on so stick with me we're going to put branches in just a minute get some of those colors up there I do want to make sure that we we get these colors all around it's very abstract yeah you can't stay and watch you'll watch the replay that's awesome that is awesome there you go and as as Darcy was saying yes just take your time and you know you don't have to get it done in one setting so this one this brighter brighter orange is papaya and I'm using it I'm dabbing more like little dots these are a little bit more specific and I'm putting them kind of in little clusters a little bit more like actual leaves and not just fields of color a 
This part was easy. You tried to go forward and do the rest. Ah. There you go. Yeah. And just take your time. Have fun. All right. So now I am going to put my branches on. And now the branches, the main thing you want to focus on with your branches is that you're looking at them from underneath. So everything is going to be going upwards. So I'm going in here and I am going upwards. And so right there, look, I just made a branch coming out of the tree, didn't I? And these branches can be spindly. You don't have to have them be perfect. They don't have to all make sense when you're putting them in. If you look at that reference, here, let me resize the reference for you for a second. Well, actually, you can see it on my, on my, my drawing right here. You see how they're spindly? You don't actually you don't actually see a whole lot. As trees grow and as the branches go up higher, you don't see all the details. And look at that. That was just drawn across the orange leaves, right? And by putting a bit more of the black into it, you were able to do the, the branch and it looks like it's been colored in and it looks like it goes with the tree. So, ooh, I just crossed over, didn't I? You can do that. You can cross over. And these branches, if they're bigger ones like this, you can put a little more detail around it on the trunk. See how that just worked in? Now I'm not going to do all the branches all the way out um, because I like to have my branches cross over into the other areas. I might put one that's coming from here. They can be, you know, very straight lined if you want to. You see how having the color on there already really helps when you're putting your branches in make it feel like they're really there. I am so excited that you have always wanted to do these types of trees, Karen. I have always wanted to do them too and have never just sat down. And yesterday when I was setting up the live stream, I was thinking I was going to do a slightly different type of tree. It was basically going to be the three trees standing in front of each other or standing next to each other. And I just, and with the, with the same type of background in a minute here, I'll show you what I was, what I was using as what I was going to use. It was, you know, just your typical three trees, little foresty stuff in the background. So I'm not you know, I, I'm not against doing that. I actually, I, I like that look. But this one, when I was looking at some references, just made me go. <gasps> and I figured if I went and it sort of took my breath in, it might do that for you too. So I'm just basically putting Okay, basically putting those the same type of triangles that I put on the trunk to make the trunk, I'm putting to make the smaller branches. I mean, look at that. It's basically the same kind of triangle, wide where it's attached to the tree, and then skinnier as it goes away. All right, that's enough branches. I'm going to take my cloudy gray and start filling in down here the areas down low. Look at that. We're just going to go like this and fill in with the cloudy gray. Wherever the paper is white, I'm just going to put the gray. 
This cloudy gray is a very blue cloudy gray. So this could be a blue sky up there. And if you wanted to, you could be putting, you could put a blue sky in. I'm not going to go all the way out here into the very center because I haven't erased my pencil lines yet. Nice thing about cloudy gray is that when it goes over the yellow, it doesn't go green. It just sort of goes a little bit darker gray. It is on the cool side, but it's not. Yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. And if you want to, let's see here, if you want to, you can take, go back and take some of your other colors and right at the edge of where your gray sort of comes in, add a few more little leaves. See? Add a few more little leaves. Whoops, wrong end. <laughs> now the caps on these are uh, firm. They do, they do have a very positive click. And they, they have a very positive pull. So would the, green go, would the blue go green if you waited for the yellow and the orange to dry? I... Yes, a little bit. You would have kind of a green tinge around the edges. I just, I liked how desaturated this gray was. So it's one of the reasons why I, I picked that. Now I want to try something. Okay, so you can put the yellow in over that, over the blue, or the blue gray here. And brighten up your sky just a little bit, your treetop, your canopy. Say I forgot to put a little bit of color. I wanted a little bit more of the yellow to show up in there. That's nice. All right, so we have done one section. I'm going to just lighten up my pencil lines a little bit and start going at the rest of this. So this is just going to be the same thing, wobbly. These ones you're going to make shorter because they don't have as far to go. You know, it's the shorter side. And yesterday when I did this, I did all of these triangles like this and then started filling them in. Let's see, I think I'm going to have one that's going, it's leaning that way. It, it ended up back over here somewhere. Look at that. See, you can cross them in. They don't have to stay just in their little triangle. <laughs> I am so glad that you like this way of doing it. It's, it, this is easy, easy perspective. You are, you are not doing anything really hard because we have that, our center from the, from the cross that we made. You can barely see it on there. I pretty much lightened it off. That's our vanishing point. Everything's going towards that point somewhere way, way high above the trees. Thank you guys so much. When you have the chance to come back and watch, please do. You know, this is, this is just a, we, just our little quiet time now. We can just play, draw. Nobody, nobody has to, to tell us to do anything unless somebody's telling us, well, we have an appointment. We have to go do something. All 
All right, so I've got my tri my triangles, and right now it looks, you know, a little bit weird, but w you can trust me. You know it's going to end up working out, right? I like this kind of illustration style. It's It really is my, the, my happy place, my go-to. If I'm doing things just for myself, just playing in my sketchbook, this is really pen and ink, adding a little bit of color. Not being too specific here. Remember, this is going way, way up. And your eyes end up losing most of those details. Ooh, that one's a wobbly tree. I like that. You never know where these branches are going to go. You know, the trees are growing in the forest. If you want, you can go and put a few little, few little scratchy lines going up. You know how bark on trees sometimes will have that, that look of being split. So you'll sometimes see vertical lines, lots of horizontal lines, but some vertical lines. I am really excited. If you guys share your, want to share your artwork with me, I do have a Facebook page I, that, that you can share your artwork on. I have a Facebook group. At you just look for Deliberately Creative on Facebook and you'll find me. You'll find the page, you'll find the group. The group does have questions. Please answer the questions if you are interested in joining the group. They're just three basic questions. You know, basically, I'm not going to try and sell anything. I'm not going to promote myself. I'm not going to, you know, that kind of stuff. And also, I am going to always be nice and always offer positive Re reinforcement. You know, if you, if somebody asks for critique, you always say two things that are good about the piece before you say something about what needs to have some help. And you only offer help if people ask for it. That's, that's what I love about my group. It's really, really very kind, very helpful. We're all in different places on our journey. Good morning, Miss Amy, and welcome. And so, Duan, Shigang, welcome. Yeah, this is great perspective to play with. Always be kind. That's that's kind of my motto through life. I try to always be kind. And I've said it before. Some people say I'm kind of like a Pollyanna. I tend to be positive. A really good portion of my life is I am positive. I'm positive that things are going to be good. Things are going to work out. I'm positive that a little bit of persistence and practice doesn't make per perfection, but it makes, what is it, uh, persistent, persistence and it makes positive, positive progress when you persevere, when you work your way through, push through, don't worry, things are going to work out. There we go. I did not take the actual photograph. The actual photograph came from Unsplash. And in a minute here, I can get the 
Let me get the Andrew Preble is the is the photographer on Unsplash. So Andrew Preble is the artist that took the photograph. So there we go. We are just going to work this one point perspective with trees all the way around. Now I'm not going to do the rest of the, well, maybe I'll do the coloring. I'll do the coloring. At least get the Well, yeah, I'll just do the coloring. See, sometimes I just, I, I have a conversation with myself. You guys just are sitting there. <laughs> and then other times I know that you're there and I'm trying to answer the questions that you have, that you haven't even asked yet. This ink is waterproof. It's the EcoPen. It's a 0.38 tip, and it is a rollerball. So that's why every once in a while you might have to put it on a piece of paper and sort of flick it to get the rollerball uh, working again if you forget to put the little black cap back on. It comes with these little tiny, oops, there it is, it comes with these little tiny rubber caps that if you remember to put it on, it keeps the tip from drying out. Whoops. Oh yeah, and this comes out and the handle is cardboard. And I do have more pens sitting here because I think I'm gonna end up using up this pen today. So there we go. Ah, uh, yes, I am always thinking out loud. <laughs> so sometimes on these bigger trees, you'll want to make, you know, more details showing up, but you don't have to. You can just let it go and... Oh, I just had a, had a brain flash. <laughs> this... This one right here makes me think of those uh, documentaries that you see on Africa and the big termite mines, termite mines, how about termite hives, termite hills, where they, they build those giant structures that look almost like castles out of mud. So there we go. All right, we're going to get the Biscotti Brown. I really enjoy these markers. <laughs> I've never been much for a, as a marker person, but I'm learning more. And as I learn more, I'm getting more comfortable with them. I like how on the watercolor paper at least. These don't tend to get as streaky looking as I remember, you know, coloring with markers was. Some of that could be because it's a brush tip and the edges sort of flow together. I'm not worried about making this a perfect coloring in because like you see, we end up with so much going on. There we go. Oh, other, other places that you can share. If you're on Instagram and you share your art on Instagram, just tag at deliberately creative and I will be notified. 
and I might even feature your art on a story on my Instagram stories with full full uh, attribution to you and if you are somebody interested in supporting my channel on patreon I do have a community page there and you can share your artwork right on patreon also lots of places this is the umber brown So now these tips, even though they are fine at the point, they can be a little bit mushy. So, but they are a, uh, they are a fiber tip that's been made into a brush. So it's, it's not bristles. It's not like the real brush, um, the real brush markers that they have that are the watercolor markers those have an actual real brush in them this brush is a is a flexible just a flexible um, fiber nib so if you push straight down on it you can mash it out so you want to work at these always at a slight angle you don't don't work straight up and down but see how just now that I have that black that was on there my little shadow type definition lines that kind of gave me the places to go in and add more shadow not worried about making it perfect, not worried about getting it all covering all the white. We don't need to worry about that. We're going to go in and dance in the yellow. I'm going to take some of that up into that opening of the sky. Leave white space. Oops. I didn't get my pencil off. Oh well. It's good enough. It's going to get covered up anyway. I'm not worried if I go over the trees a little bit. Because I put the darker color down already, I don't have to worry about that. The yellow will pick up the black ink sometimes. What markers? These markers, here, let me grab my next color. This was lemon yellow. Now we're going to go nectarine. These are the Twee markers by Arteza. They are water-based ink, blendable, dual-tipped with a fine tip and a brush tip. And yep, the tips can get a little, they can get a little stained. So don't take your, your lighter tipped colors over the dark colors when they're wet. And I'm just working these down in. Get some of that orange down low also. Just remember we're looking up through the trees and we're looking at the top part. So not not worried about showing the trunk the base of the trunk. You don't see any ground on this.
leave white spaces. Remember, that's where our blue-gray sky is going. I might leave more white space in that one. The next one over. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, Robin got her pens. I'm I'm excited to see what she does with them. Okay, and then a few touches of the papaya. Oh, and that other one was the marmalade orange. I don't think I called it out last time. The middle, my middle orange is marmalade orange. I'm just putting a few dots. And if you work on top of watercolor paper, the paper will actually hold the, the ink wet for a little bit longer. If you're working on thinner paper, your, your ink will dry quicker and it won't sort of blur and blend. I really, oh, that looks so pretty. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to erase that center. There we go. Start working some of that gray blue in there. Into where all the all the little white spaces. This is a really packed canopy right here. Not a lot of white left. But Whenever you left, leave a white space, gives you an opportunity to put a little bit of that gray in there. This is a real gray blue, so it's giving you that lovely sky type effect. Even down here at the base, on the, on the screen, card right here down here at the base we just have the branches left to put in okay grabbing the grabbing the pen and putting some branches in they don't have to they don't all have to make sense and they don't all have to have super heavy super heavy triangles, put a few heavier branches on and then have some spindly, spindly uh, little branches coming off of it. See, look at that. It's not hard. It is just taking your time. So some things I do automatically without even thinking about it is that when I'm putting a branch on, I'm automatically putting a bit heavier shadow underneath of the branch. Not all the way around, not up the whole trunk, just under the branch and down the trunk just a little bit. See? That's one of those little tips and it adds to the feeling of you're looking up from underneath and the light is above. One of those tricks of perspective. And your branches just, you know, they're, they're crossing over each other up here. They're not, you can't really tell where one tree's branches end and another tree's branches begin. And some have really long, branches. Some have some little tiny short branches. They maybe broke off in a windstorm. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, Miss Amy, you can make this card for yourself, too. You never know when things... When things start piling up, I do send artwork out to my to my patrons. I just did the drawing for my patrons for postcard art for October. I did do a drawing on Monday and gave away the art from the Monday show. I'm not giving this one away right now. This one will probably go into my patron box. See, look at that. You just say, hmm, I think I wanted something right there. And as long as your branch, where it attaches to the trunk, is thicker than where it ends, you're good. Yeah, see, Monday's was a surprise giveaway. It wasn't a, I was, was not a planned giveaway. And that's kind of how my giveaways are going to run now. I'm not going to announce that it's a giveaway. You guys are just, people are just going to, you know, the ones that show up are the ones in the, in the know. I may let my patrons know if I'm going to do a giveaway, if I know, but I didn't even know that I was going to do that. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm just having a good time and I'm just, you know, wandering along here. There we go. All right, we're going to just turn around and add some more trees. Once you've got your first set on, that first, the first quarter of your, your picture, it makes it a lot easier to think about this, doesn't it? Ooh, that one just went for a little walk sideways, didn't it? That's cool. See how I just picked up my pen and then went to the other side? Now that tree feels like it's crossing in front. <laughs> uh, President of Artist Addicts Anonymous Group. Well, hello, Madam President Amy. <laughs> yeah, I am... I'm always doing something. I'm always trying something new. I'm always adding another, always adding more skills. That I think is the thing that we need to always keep adding skills to your toolbox. going to work my way around the rest of it, guys. I, I, I have to. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to do what you need to do. And just let it be. I'm going to pull that one up taller, I think. And it's going to get a skinny one next to it. See? I left some big spaces in this one. This side of the, of the, the forest, I think, had maybe some trees were blown down in a big windstorm. And I'm just going to start putting the details on, putting some of that texture. I 
I love getting to share things with you guys. And if there's something that you are struggling with learning how to do, is there a technique in drawing that you really, really want to have help with? I have been drawing for a long, long time, and I love to share, as you can tell, <laughs> I love to share different different skills and different things I've learned over the years. I'm going to put a skinny one. It's taller. Maybe it's farther back in the forest. There we go. So remember, you're wide at the outside. You're narrow as you go towards the center. These are just little texture lines going on. And a lot of the detail comes in with the color. But these little details, putting the texture in, just helps when I put my color on, doesn't it? So, yeah, the, I have tools, art tools that I will be like, oh, I'm going to do whatever it is. I'm going to do wood burning. And so I go to a rubber stamp show and I see that they're wood burning and they're doing wood burning on paper cards. I'm like, ooh, I want to do that. So I buy the wood burner. And I don't buy the cheapest little one. I buy, you know, a mid-range, a good one that can grow with me. And I come home and I play with it for a few days. And just like the kids at Christmas, my toys will sometimes get set aside because something new and shiny shows up in front of my face. And I'll forget about it for a while. But I never get rid of tools. I'll get rid of, you know, the, the consumables. I'll give things away. You know, or if it's a tool that I know I'm not going to use. I talked about this before where I gave away all my rubber stamps except for the ones that I designed. If you keep your tools, it's amazing how often a new obsession will require one of those tools that you already have. So that's, that's another tip. Don't throw away tools or don't give away tools or you can loan tools. If you know that the person you're loaning them to is going to take care of them. So that's kind of, you know, where you know you're going to be able to get your tool back if you need to. All right. So then I took up, then I actually did do wood burning. So I do have wood burning tools. If anybody wants, you know, holiday ornaments, wood burning, let me know. It's basically like drawing with pen and ink, and you can actually do faux wood burning with sepia and brown pens on wood. You guys want some faux wood burning? We can do that. I'm, you know, getting in that. Now is the time to start getting my holiday, my new holiday decorations made that I want to use this year. Even if nobody else will ever see my decorations, I will see them. You know, I can share them online. I can share my decorated tree. So now don't have your lines be perfectly, whoops, sorry. Don't have your lines be perfectly straight. Give them, let them have some wobble. Let them have some personality and texture. That gives you places. See, when I see a little wobble, I can actually go in and that gives me 
a place to put a bit of texture and shadow. So I'm just going to work around this whole half here and just get those textury bits on. I'm not paying that close attention. I'm talking and I notice that if I'm talking, I'm not paying as close attention to the artwork and that's okay for this sort of thing. This is really like doodling, just letting your mind and guide your hand without you being super, super controlling. I'm letting my, my mind move my hand. My eye is saying, Oh, put, put some color there. <laughs> uh, yeah, anything worth doing is worth doing well. Take your time. If you want to take your time and and build build that visual vocabulary. I think that's also part of why I can let my 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 gums flap as I'm <laughs> as I'm doing this is because I do have a visual vo visual vocabulary. I've looked at a lot of trees. I've looked at a lot of shadows and branches. I've doodled a lot of shadows and branches and trees. <laughs> so, you know, just look at things. Think about how they're put together. Think about how, how light strikes things. If it's, if the light is above it, how is the, how is the light hitting it? Now remember the, these black mic mar blah, 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 blah. these black marks are texture. They're not necessarily the shadow. My shadows are really going in with the color. I'm not doing shadows with the black pen. I'm putting texture on my trees. Now I will put a little bit of shadow in with the black pen when I put my branches on, but I put my branches on after I've put my color in. Let's see. Oh, my, I've got copies of my, my journal books. So at the end, I will show you the, the dot journals because I know I had some questions. What, what were the pages like on the inside? You know, how big are they? <laughs> Those kinds of things. How many pages they are. They've got my, my artwork on the covers that were done during live streams here on YouTube. which is kind of nice because, you know, for copyright and stuff like that, I have the origin recorded. Just putting those colors in. Um, these, they're either Aspens. I think they're probably Aspens, um, based on the photograph, not having that, that white, birch type bark, but you know, birches can have kind of a pink, pinky brown type of bark also. So they could be aspens, they can be bir uh, birch, they can be anything that go goes golden with small leaves and re grow really tall. <laughs> and close together. These things, they, these, the reason why they don't grow to as big a girth around is because they grow so closely and they're always competing for sunlight. You know, the, 
the competition of the forest. But we don't tend to have big aspen or birch type forests here in the Pacific Northwest. Our forests tend to be more the evergreen and oak and maple. So they do go really pretty and we will have, you know, when we go for drives and things during the win the autumn, you can see all of the really pretty, pretty colors changing because we do have the oak and the maple. Maples really do most of our color though. Oak trees can go just a bit brown. I think I want skinny one right here. See? Fill in where you think you need one. There we go. These would be really cool uh, in a oh <laughs> that could be kind of fun. These This could be like a whole bunch of gnomes are bent over and these are the tops of their hats until I put branches on them. They're like looking, their little faces are right here looking down at something and their hats are all pointing to the center. That could be fun. I have gnomes on the brain right now. Let's see. Yep, we're going to put our color in and then we we will whoops, wrong, wrong pen. I thought I picked up my biscotti brown. I like how quickly the color goes in. And I do like working on top of the watercolor paper. And you see, I was just coloring with that, that pen and it's already dry and I can just zip around here. I will never chew anybody out for calling any kind of tree anything. Trees are beautiful. So I think whatever you call it, as long as you love it and you call it beautiful, you can name it whatever you want. Name your tree George if you want to. Name it Bob after our happy tree guy. I am definitely in the happy tree camp. Oh, that's, that would be lovely, Amy. A picture of the golden spot. Yeah, we have poplars. We, we do people, people do grow them as poplars. You know, they're poplars, they're aspens, they're birch, they're, uh, yeah. So many cultures have named things, so many different things. Okay, it's kind of like, well, not that these are a tree or anything, but it's kind of like garbanzo beans and chickpeas. I was at a natural grocer's and this lady was, she was trying to find somebody who could answer a question for her. And I looked at her and I said, what's your question? <laughs> she goes, and she's holding a can of garbanzo beans and she's going, I'm trying to find chickpeas. I said, well, you have them in your hand. And she goes, no, these are garbanzo beans. I'm trying to find chickpeas. It's like, no, you have them in your hand. Garbanzo beans is just the Mexican name for that type of plant. They are exactly the same genus. They are exactly the same and she's like, are you sure? Because I need the juice from the can of the bean of the chickpea to make some fake um, meringue because she had 
a, an egg allergic daughter who was getting married and wanted a, a Swiss meringue type of frosting on her, on her cake. And so they were going to use the, the bean juice. And I'm like, that's it. You've, you've got it in your hand. She's like, are you sure? <laughs> it's like, yes, I am absolutely positive. You are golden. Because the, the people working at the, at the store didn't, didn't even know that it was the same thing. so funny you know the the things that the things that you pick up and learn over over your years <laughs> and I've had many years and I have a father who is very very knowledgeable on a lot of things and shares that knowledge and so then I learned that it's okay to share your knowledge with people who want to know. I try not to run around and share too much. <laughs> yeah, the, but the allergy for her was an allergy to eggs. So... Luckily, she could have the beans. Now, I am one of those people that I can eat hummus and I can eat, I can eat chickpeas or gar garbanzo beans. I can eat them, you know, roasted and cooked or whatever. But if you grind them down into flour, it's like putting tin foil in my mouth if somebody uses that in a... Um, in a baking mix. So, you know, it's just one of those, one of those things. I think over here, I'm going to end up leaving a lot more of the blue, kind of like the, up, up there on the reference, how it, there's more of a opening to the sky there. I am not copying the reference picture. That would drive me insane if I were actually trying to copy it. <laughs> but I am going to kind of go, all right, there's sort of a blob of color there and kind of a blob of color here. A little bit coming in here and here. See? I'm making sure that I put my color down low also though. So it really feels from this perspective that we are sh staring straight up. You know, it's, you found your spot, you're laying on the ground and you're looking straight up. All right, so see, and have some of those blobs cross over and go behind other, you know, the other trees. Make sure that if you put some of those, whoops, if you put some of those little skinny ones in, make sure and get some color between those. I love the brightness of this sky. Yeah, um, it's a sensitivity to them. I, I, it's actually, there are certain things that you're just genetically prone, I think, towards. I think it's genes because I have a, I can't eat cilantro. Or if I do, I have to deal with the super soapy taste in my mouth because cilantro tastes like soap. 
and it's genetics. There, there is a, a percentage of people in the world that can't abide by cilantro. And I know some people say, well, you can, you can, you know, get over, you might just have an aversion. It's like, no, it's, if somebody sneaks it in and doesn't tell me, I can tell you it's there because it tastes like somebody put soap in my mouth. The same with the, um, the coriander seeds. I had somebody who was like, oh, here, take a bite into this. And I, it's a coriander seed. It's like, oh, okay. I don't know what a coriander seed is, except that I know that coriander is a flavoring. And I was like spitting it out almost immediately and saying, what on earth did you just give me? That is terrible. It tastes like soap. And to her, it tasted pleasant and almost minty. So... Coriander is the seed of the cumin, I mean, excuse me, seed of the cilantro plant. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it is a genetic thing. They say that it is in your genes if you are going to, you know, like it or not. So I get these bags of salad <laughs> and I sit there. My husband loves cilantro. So I get the bag of salad that has the cilantro in it and I sit there and I pick all the cilantro out and I put it on his plate <laughs> because he likes it. You know, it's not, it's not right or wrong. It's not, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just, you know, the way I perceive flavor, the way he perceives we're okay with that. We've been married for 36 years. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm just putting this, this is that marmalade orange. I'm just putting dabs of it in over the top of that nectarine and the lemon. This is, this is making me want breakfast really, really bad right now. I did not eat breakfast before I started the show. And I can smell that Mark has made coffee. So I'm really excited that we're, we're heading towards the home stretch here. I'm going to go ahead and put my... This is cloudy gray. Isn't that a pretty color, though? And I'm just putting it in to all the little holes... getting some of those bigger spaces and if it goes a little streaky or on top of it on top of itself and builds a little bit of depth that's okay because that's it's you know like the clouds clouds have depth they can be brighter they can be darker i'm just dancing this pen around and filling in the holes we will take the the last orange, which one? The pa -pa -pa papaya orange, the pa -pa -pa papaya papaya orange. I'm sorry, I I am happy. I am so happy how this is turning out. I hope that you are having a great time doing this, and. You guys that are here now, you are my super watchers. You are my super fans here. If you are interested in helping to support my channel, deliberately creative with, you know, helping me buy supplies or all of those kinds of, you know, equipment, I do have a Patreon. My Patreon members get free coloring sheets every month. They get free photo references that I've taken on my trips or my walks around my neighborhood. I have a lot of flowers. I love them. I have some surprises coming up here soon for my patrons. Every month I do uh, giveaways of art. 
I did a drawing for three of my patrons just a couple days ago that won, po won an art postcard, original art postcard by me. So that's, now you can see what it looks like, the difference between having branches and not having branches. Like I said, these could be gnomes standing there looking at you. Way high. Or they're really close to you, and so their little brand, their little hats are filling in a whole space. <laughs> I, you know, what can I say? My brain, I go off into a, into a fun little fun little world. This is the papaya orange, and I'm taking and just tapping a few more distinct leaves in little, little crowds, kind of like shadows that you can see a little more specifically. It is so pretty. I am so happy. Don't worry if your if your color goes over onto the trunks. Remember, trees have leaves all the way around them. This is see I even wanted to fill in a little bit of that blue space, gray space. If you have a really super soft desaturated blue. That would make a very lovely sky here. When you're working on top of the watercolor paper, if you work these pens over the top of each other, like really fast. So if I had worked my other orange and then put this on top of it, you can see how it sort of bleeds and diffuses. All right, we're gonna get those branches. And then, how often do I live stream? I live stream every Monday, mostly. And I've been, lately I've been doing my Mondays and Thursdays. I try to go for about an hour. Sometimes I go two. So remember, when you're putting your little branches on, where it attaches to the body of the tree, it's thicker and then it gets thin as it's going out. It's basically mimicking the same shape that we did when we were making the trees. The branches are basically like little, little trees growing off of trees. And then I do go and put that little shadow underneath the bottom of the branch. See, look at that. I saw this space right here that made me think, oh, that looks like a branch is coming right up that way. Just like a tree. It's a long, skinny triangle. See? Let your branches cross. They can cross each other. They can, this, these are not Ghostbuster plasma streams. You can cross your branches. Don't cross the stream, but you can cross your branches. See, just filling them in. And these branches don't all have to, like I said, they don't all have to absolutely make sense because once you get enough of them crossing, they just look like trees. Look how bright that, that lovely sky looks. You know, I'm hoping for this, this video to be the video, the video. I'd love to see this one go viral. I'd love to see people doing tons of these trees, looking up, and they, they see how easy it is. 
it's just drawing triangles. And not having to worry about perfect lines. I mean, look at that. I am not having any worry about perfect lines here. I might even grow that that tree out just a little bit. See, you can you can work this out. You can work them out. You don't have to worry. And your little branches can just be black. You don't have to worry about them being colored anymore. Because basically, once you get up high enough, these little branches are just silhouettes. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Who are you going to watch? Deliberately Creative. Yeah. I like that. But, but yeah, I want people to see, you know, you can become obsessed with something like this. You can have a, a healthy, healthy obsession. Figuring out, looking at trees going, ooh, well, that little branch just, just wanted to be a little branch. Oh, my goodness, that looks like there's a face and the, with two arms going up, and then that's his crap. Oh, my goodness. See, you start seeing things in your pictures. <laughs> I do, at least. I start seeing, you know, I guess it's, a, it's an actual effect. It's called the pareidolia effect. I learned about it from um, the Mary Atelier. She does lots of live live streams too. But she does marathon live streams every time she goes live. She's live for like eight hours. <laughs> I will do a marathon live stream for my patrons when we hit 50 patrons on Patreon. We're just coming up on 30 right now, so who knows? Maybe we'll hit that hit that 50 really fast. And then we'll have our our patron party live stream where my patrons get to tell me what to do for art. See, I'm just boom bitty boom draw those little things in. You see, I just drew that branch. And then when you color it in, it just feels so real. This is not realism. This is pretty much impressionist. It's an emotional forest. It's not, it's not anything that we're specifically going to go and find that tree with that branch. But you will find trees with branches like this out in the woods. Take a walk, get some fresh air, enjoy nature, refill your your well of creativity. Sometimes you just have to refill the well. There we go. I know this one turned into being quite quite long, but that's why I knew it was going to. So that's why I did the, you know, showing all of the steps at the beginning of the video also. Okay, not to harp on my, on my Patreon stuff. I just wanted to say that I truly value and appreciate every single person who has subscribed on Patreon. I... I love my patrons. 
I love being able to share art with them. And, you know, show little sneak peeks. I actually had put a sneak peek of this this uh, artwork up before I had posted it on my... before I even got it completely scheduled. I had posted it as a my thumbnail, but I had a different picture as the thumbnail. Oh yeah, I was going to show you that picture. I was also going to show you the journals, so I think... I think we're going to zoom out, focus, pull the tape off, always the fun thing, pull the tape off. I have been reusing this tape for several, several things. So if you were sticking around for the to see my journals, I'm getting ready to show those right after I show this. Okay, we can take the we can take the reference image off now. So look at that. Different spots in the forest. Aren't those pretty? I like having that bigger opening here. So fun. I do need to sign it. I'm going to just sign it down here in one of the trees with my little initials, kind of like my initials were carved on a tree, but only in the most kind way here. Look at that. All right. So I'm going to go back to the wide view. This one still has the reference image up. <laughs> there we go. Let's go ahead and zoom out. So if you're interested, my books are up on my, uh, up on my, my brain just lost where I was going. <laughs> my books are up on my Amazon shop and I'm getting the link right now. <laughs> looking down. Sorry, I have to <laughs> had to go and open up my sticky notes. And let's see here. There we go. Copy and paste. I should put S SB plus MB. Yeah. Okay, so this is my Amazon store. So it has the links for all of my... Now I need to hide my... There. No, come on. Go away. Go away, screen. There you go. <laughs> so the journals. So the Amazon store is an awesome place. My books are up and look at this. It looks like a real book. <laughs> Let's make me a little smaller. Or let's see. I'll go over to the other side and make me smaller. There we go. All right. So the journals, they are, see, just a nice light journal, uh, nice light dots. Makes it really nice for doing patterns or doing bullet journaling. And the neat thing about it is these are 130 pages, so 125 pages of pages that you can draw on. You can set up three months of a bullet journal if you wanted to. You could uh, do use it as a dream journal, all those things. So all of them have a, this journal belongs to. 
It has the ideas for journaling. And at the back of each of the books, I did put one coloring page just to give people an opportunity to, you know, see what my style is. So the Harvest Your Thoughts has the succulents at the back. The unicorn popsicle has the shamrocks at the back. And the night garden has the trilliums at the back. So all my own art, all of the art was done live here on YouTube. And it's so cool. And they're only seven bucks, seven bucks, 130 pages. Um, nice, nice paper. It's a, the cream paper. So it's the slightly heavier of the Amazon paper. I have not tested because I don't want to draw on these ones yet, but, um, I will test my, ah, I will, I will draw on this. I will draw on this one. I will make just a, let's see. I just want to draw a box. You can see black ink shows up really nice on it. And we're going to flip it. You can barely see the eco pen is giving us a lovely, lovely look. The paper is nice and smooth. It doesn't have any texture. Um, I don't recommend using a soppy wet media on it without doing something to, to kind of, um, sort of prep your page. So it does feel like it's absorbing these water, water marker. This is just, this is just a really quick, wasn't planning on doing this type of thing, but let's see what these twee markers look like. on here. All right. So we have a little gemstone and now, well, you can see a shadow right now while it's still wet. I wonder if that will fade after it's dry. We can dry it real quick. This is, you know, just a quick test because I've not tested it before. I just want to see if it, if it, if the ink kind of fades out a little bit. So it looks, yeah, let's, let's do it as the zoom, not as the, not as me picking it up. There. Now you can see the dots. So it does ghost. It does ghost. But if you're setting up your dot journals and using the, using this to lay, do layouts and you're going to be writing the black ink seems to it. Oh my gosh. It just writes so smoothly on here. A little impromptu doodle gem guys with the, with those markers. Okay. I am just I want to see what it looks like from the back side, you know, because sometimes things can look really cool and actually give you a starting place to do. I keep picking up two pages. All right. This black ink does not seem to ghost too much. I mean, you can barely see it. I did lay out the pages. So the dots are actually really opposite of each other. They're not offset. So <laughs> thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you taking a look at these books. If you buy them, please leave a comment after you've made your purchase and you've received them. Check them out. Do what you need to do to do your journaling 
and see how it works for you. I think this is going to be a great place to do some doodling in, and I'm really, really excited. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, great gift, my fl fun floral mandalas, and it's the same price. It's $6.99. And that's where the designs that are in the backs of the books came from also. Oh, here's one that I was coloring. So, fun floral mandalas, coloring books, and journals. Gifts. Things to give to your friends. Things to give to your family. Things to give to yourself. Take care of yourself. Go out and do something creative. I want you to rebuild your visual vocabulary. Take a look outside, look at the flowers, see how something is made, look at your coffee cup, whatever it is, just take a couple seconds, take a deep breath and look. And I'll see you guys back here Monday live show. And who knows, I might go live before then or drop some videos. I'm thinking about dropping a few speedy type videos and then putting the long videos over on my patron channel. Sometimes you just got to do things to, you know, fill your well. <laughs> Take care, guys.